Okay, so we're going to talk about a little bit more about the control of the heart rate. So we've seen that uh, the, the, um, the heart itself has an area of cells called the sinoatrial node. Um, sorry, the, yeah, the sinoatrial node. Um, which uh, is a natural has a natural pacemaker um, function. It, it creates an action potential about once once a second, slightly more than once a second. Every time that fires, uh, you get a cardiac cycle occurring. The atria contract first of all, then the ventricles attract, uh, contract. But what we haven't really talked about is obviously during times of um, physiological stress, exercise, so forth, the heart rate will need to go up. And then during times of rate, uh, rest, it will need to, to go down. So before we do that, it's under the control with this thing, the autonomic nervous system here, right? So the heart, the, the heart rate is under control of the autonomic nervous system. Now, the autonomic nervous system is mostly uh, involuntary things. It don't, the, the, you know, this, this does not reach the level of consciousness. And it can be divided, divided into two sections, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. Now these are, they have two different functions, almost opposite functions. They're uh, anatomically, they're separate structures and they use different um, uh, neurotransmitters at synapses as well. So they are you know, physically distinct and they have distinct different roles to play. So let's talk about the sympathetic. Now whenever you, the sympathetic nerves uh, of fire. So first of all, let's talk about the, the target organ. So the autonomic nervous system affects things like the heart, the small intestines, the pancreas, all blood and eyes, and, and, and lots of other organs as well, the sex organs, various other things. Um, now let's see, when the sympathetic uh, nervous system, when those nerves, which um, sympathetic nerves fire, that tends to um, promote a sort of fight and flight kind of fight or flight um, kind of responses. So with the heart rate, for example, that's gonna go make it, if the sympathetic nervous system is firing, the heart goes faster. Small intestines, it will shut down the small, the small intestines. Um, the pancreas, the secretions of the pancreas will dry up. The gallbladder will stop making secretions. Uh, and the eyes, um, the, it makes the, the one very visible sign, it makes the pupil dilated. So your pupils will be dilated. That is if the sympathetic uh, um, system is getting the upper hand and firing uh, more than the other branch, the parasympathetic. Each of those organs has a, is supplied with sympathetic nerves and with parasympathetic nerves. Quite often, parasympathetic is sometimes called uh, rest and digest, or I think feed and breathe is another one. So it's, it's kind of like when you're resting. So it will slow down your heart. It will stimulate secretions in the small intestines and increase um, like peristalsis and stuff. Increase secretions from your pancreas and from the gallbladder. And it makes the, the pupil of the eye um, very small and pinned. And that's how you can tell if that's got the upper hand. Okay, so that's the autonomic nervous system. We really, and um, oh, let's talk about the, uh, the, um, neurotransmitters at the end. So this is at uh, really we're talking uh, where it meets the organ. Okay. Uh, at the nerve organ synapse. Now parasympathetic uses the one which we have uh, pretty familiar with that uses acetylcholine. Whereas the sympathetic uh, uses a chemical you probably haven't heard of this before, you heard of something very similar uh, called noradrenaline, which is chemically very similar to adrenaline. Um, we can have a look at the structures later. Adrenaline is of course produced by the adrenal gland and that gets released into the bloodstream and it goes around and affects every organ. Whereas uh, with the sympathetic, when the sympathetic fires, the, the noradrenaline is not released into the bloodstream, generally speaking, a little bit leaks into the bloodstream, but it's released at the, the end of the nerve, just in the synapse where it meets the target organ, the heart or whatever it may be. Okay, so let's have a look at how this uh, 
things together. So in this little diagram here, I've got the heart down here. Um, uh, this is the brain. Uh, now the region of the brain where these uh, two branches of the sympathetic uh, and parasympathetic nervous system come from, this is called, it's at the bottom of the brain, uh, the medulla oblongata, it's called. And this is where, you know, the conscious thought does not come from the bottom of the brain, it comes from the cord, from the, um, the, from, uh, the cortex of the brain. Um, and so uh, it doesn't reach the level of consciousness. Now the green is supposed to represent uh, the parasympathetic branch and the, the red is the sympathetic. And they go to, which one is sympathetic? Right, they go to the sinoatrial node. Okay, so that's the pacemaker um, cells. And they also, they also divide up and do go to the rest, to other parts of the heart as well. So it doesn't just affect the sinoatrial node, it affects the atria and the ventricles also. Okay, so what causes these nerves to fire? Now, let's see what happens if, let's say um, the parasympathetic nervous um, uh, is firing. So let's say this one is getting the upper hand. What will happen is then that will, it will release acetylcholine. Uh, that will bind to receptors on the surface of the cardiac cells and of the sinoatrial node cells. And that will uh, slow the rate of firing. Uh, and the way it does that, it's not, it's not, uh, the acetylcholine doesn't bind to a ligand gated channel. It binds to, it, it binds to a protein on the surface of the cell and that cell then um, exerts, its, that, that, that protein exerts its effect. On the other end, it makes cyclic AMP and that's called a second messenger. So it's, it, and that is what controls what goes on inside the cell. It's not just simply uh, an ion channel like we've could like the one we've come across before at the neuromuscular junction for example where acetylcholine binds and that is itself a sodium channel lets in sodium it, it works slightly differently to that okay so that will anyway the important thing it, it slows the rate of firing uh, now there's a sympathetic if that has got the upper hand that will fire that will release noradrenaline That will bind to a different receptor, set of receptors on the surface of the cells, and that will, uh, uh, will increase the rate of firing. Uh, again, the neuroadrenaline, um, it doesn't bind to um, uh, an ion channel, it binds to a protein, which uh, changes the level of cyclic AMP inside the cell, and that's how the, the effects are, on, on, are felt. Okay, so it's under two systems. One makes it go faster, one makes it go slower. Now, what can what actually happens there? Now, this is where the second the bit of the diagram here, this black thing here is supposed to be, it's supposed to be either the aorta uh, or the carotid artery. Uh, now, the carotid artery is the uh, is the artery which comes out of the aorta and goes and supplies. Um, the the head okay so now in the aorta in the carotid artery we have things called chemoreceptors and what they do is they can detect first of all they can detect a, a drop in pH and that's caused by an increase in carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is an acidic gas so if you're respiring more You've got a higher concentration of CO2 in your blood. Uh, the pH will drop slightly, not much, by 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 units, from pH 7.4 to 7.3, uh, and that can be detected by the chemoreceptors in these arteries. Also, they can detect um, CO2 itself, not just pH, but directly. And also, they can detect oxygen uh, levels, concentrations of oxygen in the blood. And well, you can probably guess what's going to happen here. If you've got a, if you've got um, uh, low carbon dioxide, 
sorry, high carbon dioxide, high CO2, which would give you low pH, and that would tend to give you low oxygen concentration as well. In which case, I've done that in red because what's that going to do? It's going to stimulate the, or it's going to send a message to the medulla oblongata, which in the medulla oblongata is then going to increase the rate of firing of the sympathetic nerves. That's going to release noradrenaline in the heart, and make the heart go faster. Right, let's do in green what would happen then if the opposite of that, so we've got low carbon dioxide levels, then you're asleep and you're not doing anything. The pH would be relatively high, it'd be 7.4. And the uh, concentration of oxygen would be high. And so what would happen then is the exact opposite, the parasympathetic, the heart doesn't need to be beating fast. The parasympathetic would take over the fire, release acetylcholine at the heart, and that would slow the heart down, okay? So the chemo, the chemo receptors play a big part in controlling heart rate. But that isn't the full story. There's also something called baroreceptors. The baroreceptors are, they are pressure receptors. And so if it's a kind of a feedback mechanism, then if you have high pressure, um, what's that gonna do is that will the heart will need to stop beating quite so fast to lower the blood pressure. So that will stimulate, go back to the medulla oblongata, and that will stimulate a parasympathetic um, uh, activity. And the opposite, if you've got low pressure, low blood pressure, you need to increase it by making the heart work harder and beat faster. Um, and so that will stimulate the sympathetic. Right, so I've just really talked about the heart rate here. It's actually a lot more complicated than that because the heart, not only does it beat faster, but it beats harder as well. We haven't mentioned uh, the effects of that, but obviously the parasympathetic is gonna make it beat less hard and the sympathetic will not beat, make it beat with greater force. Okay, finally, a uh, quick word about noradrenaline. Okay, so what we've got these three structures here, skeletal structure, so remember if we say that um, every every like one of those that's a carbon atom yeah they're all carbon atoms if you uh, each carbon is forming uh, three bonds four bonds sorry so this one here would have to have two hydrogens but you don't draw the hydrogens on it whereas uh, that one there is already forming four bonds so there'd be no hydrogens on that and so forth but, um, so just tell you what these structures are then so this is the amino acid tryptophan Sorry, tyrosine, not tryptophan. Um, and you can see, probably see, right, there's the carboxylic acid group, there's the NH2 group, and this would be the so-called R group. Okay, now the top one here is uh, adrenaline. And you can see there, what you've done is you've got rid of that uh, carbox carboxylate group and you stuck on a couple of extra OHs, one there and one there and you've got adrenaline. So adrenaline is made from the amino acids, tyrosine, that's the raw materials for it. And this is noradrenaline which is extremely similar to adrenaline. The only difference is this is actually called, this would be called a primary amine. We do chemistry and this one's called secondary amine because there it's got, so that is actually a car, one carbon there with three hydrogens on it. That's actually a CH3 group there. So there's the structures of those three. Um, noradrenaline and adrenaline have pretty similar effects to each other on the activity of the heart. You know, adrenaline makes the heart beat faster. The difference is generally, adrenaline was generally released into the bloodstream. Uh, and that goes right around the body whereas noradrenaline is released mostly just at the synapse. So it's more of a local effect. Okay, so just to finish off, just to remind you, there's the system we've got. We've got the, the aorta and the carotid artery with the baroreceptors and the chemoreceptors. They send messages to the medulla oblongata in the brain, which then coordinates the firing of the parasympathetic to slow the heart down or the sympathetic to speed the heart 